Hi there, and welcome to this short introduction about an update we've done on our TD scripts for Blender. I've fired up Blender and Touch Designer. First, you want to make sure that you have downloaded both the tox and the .py file. So that's the tox for Touch Designer and the add-on for Blender. After you've downloaded both the files, you first install the add-on by going to Edit Preferences, Install from File, and enable the add-on by ticking the box. Installing the tox is more straightforward. I have put it myself in the palette. You can just drag it in from your local hard drive. You want to make sure that these versions correspond with each other. So this tox has a 1.4.2. And if you go to Blender, you see that it says 1.4.2 as well. It's important that these numbers match, otherwise the scripts won't work. First, get rid of all this stuff, import something more funky, like this monkey. If I want to transfer this monkey mesh into Touch Designer, I just press this first button called Mesh, click it once, go to Touch Designer, there is this Get Pulse button, and if you hit it, after a very short time, it's rebuilt inside Touch Designer with this Dead to Sop operator. There is really not much more to it. It's the simplest export of all these scripts. It just creates one SOP. Your TO file might get a little bit bigger because the mesh is entirely rebuilt inside Touch Designer itself, so it doesn't relate to some file on your hard disk. It's good to have that in the back of your mind. I'm now going to try the script in the beta section. It's because this one is a bit related to the script before. The only difference is, is that this script supports multiple materials and it builds the material network inside Touch Designer as well. So for instance, if you have a material assigned to this monkey, give this a base color of green. If you now look at the material preview, this one is green. If I, for instance, add another material, and I will give this a different color. For instance, blue, assign it another section of the monkey. This one, deselect that. Another material, give this the color red, assign it. I'm just going to call this one green, blue, and red. So click the object, hit the button into Touch Designer, hit the pulse button, and you see that the model is rebuilt with a couple of additional components. And if you open this view, you see that this monkey has the materials applied as well. If you look at the geometry container itself, you see that it has added the materials themselves as well. And you have the ability to edit them in real time. So you can change the colors, something different, adjust the metallic values, the roughness. And if you go inside this, you see that there is a GLSL mat who takes care of all the materials assigned to the applicable vertices. And you see that it laid out a container for every material, the blue and the red. So this is a very convenient way if you have multiple materials applied to one object. Instead of the FBX protocol, it's doesn't trash the entire model into separate pieces, but it keeps the model intact and assigns every material in the background using a GLSL material. I've been testing this script for quite a while now, but it's still in the beta section, but it doesn't say that it's buggy. The thing is that I'm reconsidering all these categories and the mesh export and the material export might be come obsolete when this export multimat is working properly. But for now, I just keep this button under the beta section. 
Let's have a look at a different script. The UV map script is very convenient if you're planning to add certain elements to your color maps, for instance. So if you have a color map, let's take a movie file in, search for something square-ish. This one, I'm just going to fit this inside a square, thousand by thousand, fill, all right. What I could do is uh, I can overlay this UV map. I'm going to put a level where I can adjust the opacity. And if I overlay this, I'm going to switch the order. Then I can see which part of the color map will affect what part of the mesh. So let's say if I have some kind of color that I like to overlay on top of this model. Take something simple, constant, make it red, switch the order. So this one to native and I can just move this square and then I can just put it to the desired location where the color edge needs to be applied to the mesh. This is a very convenient way if you have already exported all your color maps, normal maps and you just want to adjust a very tiny simple part and you don't want to go back to some texturing program and go through all the hassle with exporting all your color maps all over again. The next script I'd like to show you is the camera script. First we need to import an actual camera. So shift A camera. I'm going to put this into walk navigation mode. Let's see, I first have to look for the camera, put it at a position like this, highlight camera, execute the script into touch designer, press the pulse button and there is your camera. To see if it's actually lined up, you can just select the camera, fill in the name into the render section, it's camera. Get some light source in there and you see that the camera is lining up perfectly well with the version in Blender. This also works for animated cameras. I'm just going to put this one on the first position in the timeline and I would like to import a keyframe. Let's see the location and the rotation. I'm going to put it 50 frames further, position it somewhere different, add another keyframe, set the length of the animation, so let's preview it, see how it looks, select the camera, press the script into touch designer, delete this one press the button and you see that it's animating. I'm going to adjust the range because I've exported this time-based animation based on 30 FPS. Touch Designer is running at 60 FPS so the entire animation will fit in the double amount of frames so that will be 100. Working with cameras is also something that works the other way around. So we can import camera data into Blender. So I'm just going to delete this camera for now. There is this import section with a button. But before you press this, you first have to set something up in Touch Designer. There is this export tab where you can fill in the name of the camera. So you can just drag it in. It says Cam1. I've just made a simple camera, positioned it in a slightly different way. 
And if I hit this export pulse button, and I go over to Blender, and I guess hit this button, you see that it plays the camera, and if I look into the camera view, you see that it's lining up perfectly fine with the version in Touch Designer. Unfortunately, this only works with still cameras, yet, hopefully in the future, I can support this for animated cameras as well. But this is a convenient approach if you have some fancy tool where you've lined up the camera inside Touch Designer with Cam Snapper or some other difficult alignment tool. And you want to take this over to a more sophisticated 3D environment, then this script suits that workflow pretty well. Now back into the beta section, there's also this export animated SOP script. And that's basically the same thing as with the camera. You just import a keyframe. I'm just going to the first frame, set it to rotation, and then to the last one and do some kind of fancy rotation with it. So another keyframe. And if I press play, you see that the monkey is spinning. Just select it, hit the export animated SOP script into Touch Designer, hit the pause button. And you see that the animated monkey head is exported over into Touch Designer completely rebuilt inside Touch Designer, maintaining all the separate materials, still editable, give it a different color in real time. The way how this is set up is that it's basically exported every displacement of every vertice inside a texture. And this uses a script top, so there is a lot of NumPy data put into this script top, especially with very large meshes, this can become a pretty heavy file, which also makes your tow file a bit bigger and slower to load. So what you could do is you can export this file into an EXR, because you have to export it in 32 bits, so you can go beyond the zero and one clamping. So set this one to image, set this one to open EXR and just hit record once. So you have your model and animation data stored on your hard disk and you can just use the move file in to pinpoint to that file. That makes your tow file less heavy on the loading, it makes it smaller and you now have a image file that contains your vertex data for every frame. So you can toss it around, email it, save it and share it with all your friends. Besides object-oriented transformations, this export script also works with displacement animations like bones and morph targets. I'll give you a quick example. I'm going to duplicate this monkey head, set it aside, insert a cube. If I select this one, give it a modifier, a shrink wrap modifier, the target would be the cube. I'm going to select the monkey head apply the modifier, delete the cube, into solid mode again, select both of them to the shape key section, join as shapes. Now if I select this object and I animate this value, you see that it's displacing the vertices. I can keyframe this as well, so I put in a keyframe in here and one on the end. So this is the one keyframe. Let's see how it's animating. Like this. All right, select it. I have to assign a material. It gives an error, so a material selected. Export animated top into Touch Designer. Hit the pulse button. And there is your animated monkey head. Like I've mentioned, this also works with bone kind of animations and it's also very optimized because the heavy lifting is all done on the GPU. A couple things to keep in mind is that if you are working with meshes with materials and you would like to export them to Touch Designer as well, you have to make sure that you are using the principled shader. So in the node viewer, 
it will look like this and you can also use image textures so I'm just looking for a image texture I'm just going to pick something from the touch designer samples so this file put this in the base color and another file just going to duplicate this open it this file for instance for the metallic and another one this one for instance for the roughness the current supported maps are the base color the metallic the roughness and the emission and the alpha i'm just going to assign a slightly bigger part to this material as well so i select it and assign it and if i now export one of these two scripts take the first one into touch designer and hit pulse you see that the model took the image textures with it so if you go into this blue section you see that it's now locating to a column map null so if you go inside and you see that the base color is now a movie file in with the applicable image file that leads me to the last script i would like to show you it's the material script you basically have to select your mesh the material you would like to export and just hit the button inside touch designer you hit pulse and there is a pbr material laid out with the data as it is in blender it also works with image maps so inside blender if i had the blue one with all the image textures i hit material inside touch designer hit pulse and there are all the textures applied to the material this has been a script that was one of the first one just like the mesh exporter but now with the beta section for the multi-material and the animated multi-material these two scripts might become obsolete but i'm not sure yet it sometimes might be, might be convenient to export only the material but if you have other ideas about this just let me know in the comments that's it for now regarding the showcase of this add-on keep in mind that you download both the tox and the add-on and make sure that both the versions match both the tox and the add-on are available at our patreon this is a free download but please consider supporting us to invest more time in maintaining this add-on there's been put a lot of effort and time into this have a look at our other tools on our patreon there is a lot out of there please consider supporting us it will help us a lot and we'll catch up next time